Good morning. Hi, Davi. I'm good, thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, is Annika? Yes, nice yeah, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Sit down, please. Thank you. So firstly, why are you here? So why medicine as a career choice? Um, so medicine has been, it, it didn't come to me as a, just a spark moment saying I want to do medicine or um, it's, it's kind of an accumulation of things over the past few years that have made me uh, choose medicine as a career pathway at the moment. Um, I think my work experience really helped at the start when I was really, con I used to enjoy science at school. But I was really confused as to why I can actually translate that into as a as a yeah. future prospect, and um, I did volunteering at care homes. I uh, did work experience with my local GP, yeah. and then I found that so interesting that I was like, I need to see other aspects of this healthcare sure. uh, industry. So I, I, then I um, luckily got a work placement at Basin Hospital, uh, and I shadowed some consultants there, and I, it was really eye opening. Um, and I like I like the impact that you can translate the science into. Uh, kind of an art and then apply sure. to people um, sure. and the communication aspect and one of the main major things is that you're in the heart of the community yeah I see um, I see I mean there's lots of careers like that for example nursing where there's a lot of science background and you actually go into hospitals and apply some you know clinical aspects so why not nursing why have you thought about medicine as a set career no I, I agree and nursing nurses are the backbone of the NHS industry um, and that healthcare cannot be sustained in this country without the help the nurses give in on yeah. the clinical practice of and application of medicine. However, um, the core fundamental preclinical medicine that is taught in the medicine course is of real interest to me. I, I re I'm really curious as, as a person and to find out the core um, fundamental science behind how the body works sure. is also very interesting to me. So although applying it in my career is the main focus that I want to go into, um, learning about it fills my curious nature. So I think that's why. It's clear, it's clear you know what it means to be a doctor in terms of the qualities. What would you name its three main qualities that a good doctor has? When, when I look at doctors or doctors I've shadowed in the past, I, I see them as all rounders. So it's very difficult to you can't have a doctor who's weak on say communication or weak on intelligence or weak on uh, his speech yeah. or weak on understanding. So, but if I had to limit it, I'd say, I'd say caring or em empathic mm -hmm. uh, because you need to have a core fundamental want to be helpful to a person. Sure. Um, conscientious, uh, that's also in the practicality of his skills and also conscientious in the way he make the doctor makes sure that his foundations of like medicine are, are sound and also um, confidence or good communication those those good good that, that sounds great to me and in your work experiences so far have you thought about any specialties anything you want to really go into um i only shadowed around uh, the gp and i think two yeah. two departments in thousand hospital i don't really have enough exposure of course to make yeah. a like huge decision but um, every aspect the, the tertiary hospital and the gp placement both had their amazing um, experiences that I had with them. So sure. I, I can't really say at this That's stage. That's right. I mean, so early to know. It's very <laughs> early to know. Um, so moving on to more, um, you know, the sort of difficulties of being a doctor, the dilemmas they face. One is um, very ethical scenarios. Okay. So um, a, a lot of the time in the news, there's a lot of talk about assisted suicide. What's your view on assisted suicide? Assisted suicide. Is this, sorry, just to clarify, sure. is this just the doctor helping uh, one of the patients in suicide? Yeah, so there's lots of clinics um, around the world where a patient is willing to die and it's kind of helping them finish that process of dying. So it could be handing them a tablet which causes them to die or have, um, allowing them to have a drink which causes them to die. So kind of helping the process of um, suicide, which works when they have terminal illnesses. Mm -hmm. So do you think that should be allowed in the UK? No, I, okay. Um, so... I have done some wider reading uh, around the subject of uh, ethics and the um, areas around euthanasia and suicide and assisted suicide. And from that, what I can say is I know it's allowed in some countries, um, but I don't think in the UK it is allowed. And that's correct. Um, fundamentally, as a person, um, that's not a decision, uh, even if I was a doctor, to make. I think it's a structural decision that the health ministry makes. And right now, I don't think in the UK it's allowed. Um, Maybe, and I think the factors are such as the Hippocratic Oath, the ma main purpose of the doctor is to be to conserve okay. life or save life. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's allowed in the UK. 
And just changing tack a little bit, going on to another ethical scenario. Okay. Um, in recent like, years, there's been many strikes, for example, the Catholic Junior Doctor contracts, mm-hmm. etc. I'm sure you've heard about many of them. Yeah. Um, many people are split about this. Some people believe that it's doctors' right to strike, of course, as it is in any mm-hmm. other profession. And some people feel that doctors shouldn't be leaving their post for a day because the effect on patients is okay. very big. So, mm-hmm. from your personal opinion, what do you believe? So... Yeah, I agree. This was in the news for quite a while. And uh, as a potential medical applicant, this was of great interest to me because I was like, this is the this is the people I'm going to be working with. These are the people I aspire to become. And they're out on the streets for something that they're clearly motivated about. Mm-hmm. Um, and although well, at the start it was a blur because you don't really get the, enough information out on just watching one news news clip, you know. So I had to, I had to dig in and I read the student BMJ. I, I read some medical uh, doctor forums, mm-hmm. and through that I really understood the broader picture of what the complex scenario of this contractual problem is mm-hmm. between the NHS and the junior yeah. doctor contract. So, if someone like if I ask you to go through the pros and cons of allowing doctors to strike, maybe on one hand argue why doctors should be allowed to strike, on the mm-hmm. other hand why maybe they shouldn't. Could you run yeah. me through that? Yeah, um, doctors. Despite their amazing, despite the amazing work they do, they are people in the end, and they have, uh, they do get tired. They do have a, a life outside of medicine, mm-hmm. and as any other job, they are they have the right to protest, to want more pay, or mm-hmm. have sufficient pay, or be rewarded for the amount of time and skills that they give. Mm-hmm. So, in terms of their fundamental reason to strike, they should be allowed, as mm-hmm. they are humans like mm-hmm. anyone else. And if we, in a democratic country, if you have a right, if you have a problem with something, I think you should have a right to. Mm-hmm. To protest, well, they're not putting patients at risk. Yes, that's yeah. that's the second point I was just kind of on to. So, um, I think the fact that this has to be done by hospital to hospital, so, so the people at the head, the managers or the consultants, mm. they must allow the junior doctors to express their opinion through mm. these strikes, sure. ensuring that the minimum amount to maintain, like maintain the hospital running, should be done. Mm-hmm. So you can't have like hospitals being empty because every doctor, every nurse is outside. Mm-hmm. But surely you should allow the junior pro- doctors to have their days or allocated shifts to make sure that they haven't, they can have their say, but also don't put the general public sure. at risk. Sure. And yes, that's something which, um, when you have a strike, you're very correct in saying that you have to prioritise. And you look at the hospital, for example, they tend to rearrange um, elective surgeries, which are not urgent, whereas yeah. emergency services are still very, very well staffed from the day. So. As you said, there are many things that you can prepare for in advance. Yeah, so we've just been looking at your first statement. It says you carried out work experience at Basildon Hospital, which you just mentioned. Yeah. Um, could you tell me a little bit about what you did and what you learned from it? Yeah, sure. Um, so I shadowed um, the nephrology department and the urology department. Mm-hmm. So I was, uh, I was in theatre for uh, two surgeries, and I was really exciting for watching the doctors in hand um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, sorting out um, and treating prostate cancer in its terminal stages um, and they went through the surgery and it was very nice to see the multidisciplinary team, the anaesthetic sure. working with the surgeon, the nurses being there to support the surgeon in any need. Uh, there were two assistant surgeons so I really loved the team dynamic that I saw there and the some of the things that I, in, were inspiring was the like the focus to cleanliness and sure. hygiene that you I think in daily life we take these for granted. So I think okay. theatre that was one of the things that was really amazing. Was there anything you saw that was kind of a mistake or anything any bad practice you saw? Um, from my eyes, I don't think I saw What's anything it? that I could comment on. I, I don't think so. No. Has it changed your view of medicine in any way? Um, initially, when the, the, so I, I, I did work experience as a GP, but when I went to Basel mm-hmm. Hospital. I found that everything was very structured, and initially I thought this is so this is so strict on the timetable and it's procedural. But then I realised that this procedure kind of stabilises the destabilised lives of patients that come in. So they come in with their life messed up, work messed up, family uh, affected, okay. and what the Basin Hospital organised structure happened was they at least gave them security that you're going to be controlled and organised here. We've got you, and that kind of like support that they gave mentally to the patient was really inspiring. I thought that was amazing. And just like looking at your personal statement, you do lots of things, acting in Macbeth, um, play guitar, etc. But amongst all of that, as everyone does, they do our weaknesses. What would you say is your greatest weakness? So I think my greatest weakness that I'm trying to really work on is impatience. Um, that's something as a kid I've always had my mom and dad who saw us the rest of this kid. Uh, and I've tried to work on it. And what happens is I want my, my curious nature makes me want to have a hand at everything. And if 
on doing so, sometimes I can't focus on one thing enough. So mm -hmm. for example, if you take guitar, for example, I love playing the guitar. But then after I reached a certain level, I was like, no, I love the piano. So I moved mm -hmm. on to the piano. So this is something I'm working on um, to, to make, maybe channel my, all my energy into some like, few aspects rather than all. Um, but impatience is something I think that's my, probably my biggest weakness. Okay, sure. Yeah. And um, going into practice, one important skill is teamwork. Uh, you mentioned you do lots of sports and that sort of thing. So can you give me one example where you've shown good teamwork and good leadership as well in the same scenario? Um, in the same example, well, you, different scenario. Yeah. Um, so I played um, football for my school team, mm -hmm. uh, and these were people. I I, joined, I actually joined my school a bit late. I, I joined in year nine, and uh, I didn't really know the team. Or the team had their own team dynamic going, and I was lucky enough to get selected on the team. But I didn't know the dynamics, the passing work, how the players sure. work, the formation work. So I had to kind of. I, I brought my own style of play, I brought my own set of team, like team tactics that I played in my own team. And coming into this new team, um, I had to adapt myself to work in their, their kind of tactics or their strategy. Yeah, yeah. And that, that actually worked better because if, you, if I play, find my place in the team, we as a team perform better. So kind of lowering your guard and adapting to your surroundings is, is very important in teamwork. You have to compromise here and there and reach the best of the team you can. And, and how would you relate out to medicine, working in, in a hospital or in a hospital ward? So, oh, ooh, that's an interesting question. Um, I, I saw one uh, MDT, which is like a multidisciplinary yeah, team, yeah, I think. Correct. Um, so in that, there were many doctors in the room, and there was a really complex patient. I'm not sure what the case was, but um, one consultant was saying, suggesting one treatment, and then the nurse said, no, actually, this would not be suited to their lifestyle. And then another doctor was saying something. And in that scenario, I saw that these people, each with their own authority, had to kind of come to a decision because in yeah. the end, they don't. The time is limited, and they had to sort this patient out. And in that, I saw one of the consultants leading the process, being like, "Okay, we've got these things at the hand. Uh, you've got this option. You've got this option. And um, now let's kind of come to unanimous agreement of what the best alternative is." Sure. And each doctor had to compromise on a little bit on what they wanted for the patient. But in the end, they have to understand that everyone in the team wanted the same thing. And that's the same for football, I guess. Everyone wanted yeah, to win. Poetry. Everyone wanted to win the league. So it's kind of like just everyone works together in the end for the same goal. And that's sure. the main key, I think. <laughs> so moving on, you said you do a lot of reading um, in the BMJ Journal, for example. So what do you know about the Charlie Gard case? I'm afraid I don't know about the Charlie Gard case. Um, that's okay. No worries. <laughs> Can you tell me anything else you read in the news recently? For example, about GPs? Um, I read an article saying, uh, suggesting the fact that GP had to be open for seven days, I think, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's last month or so. Sure. Um, and I also read an article about online consultations that now doctors are like pan across the country are doing online consultations with patients. Yeah, so that is very much in the news recently. So what can you tell me about this um, idea? What, what are your thoughts of healthcare moving online, for example, on video chat? I think medicine is as a as an industry has to embrace technology and we have been for the past 200 years um, there's new techniques that come as that revolutionize healthcare for the the population and the internet with its pros and cons uh, i think has a lot of potential to offer uh, in terms of consultations um, doctors are, have a great skill set and like um, communicating with patients who are maybe physically in, yeah. unable to attend a clinic or uh, specialist doctors who are too far away from the patients if they have online consultation i think it's something to embrace thanks for watching click here to sign up for one to one tutoring with insider university knowledge guaranteed improvement and a personalized experience get your medicine offer today